next session um, of the day. Um, we've got three very exciting talks um, over the next um, hour or so. And um, the first of those gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Michael Jarvis. He um, joined us recently from um, Portland, Oregon, and has worked on a variety of different things, but most recently <coughs> has been working on CMB based um, recombinant vaccines. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks. Hello. Okay, so in my lab, um, which up until April was in Portland, Oregon, Oregon Health Sciences University, two major focuses all based around herpes viruses, uh, cytomegalovirus specifically. Uh, one sort of looking at its um, regulation of the innate, innate immune response, various aspects of persistence and pathogenesis. And the other, which has been sort of the focus of my lab over the last eight years, is to look at the ability of this virus to be uh, utilized as a vaccine vector uh, to target a variety of diseases. So a brief uh, background of CMB. It's a, um, a virus, extremely large uh, herpes virus, 230 kilobases of DNA, extremely large. It's been with us as mammals for an extremely long period of time. It's uh, co-evolved with its a specific mammalian species, so, so every CMB that's, or every species that's been looked at has its own particular, uh, very well adapted CMB uh, that it, it's infected by. As you would probably expect, if it's been with us for a long period of time, it's ubiquitous in populations, um, basically up to 100% of the population uh, is infected uh, with its own CMB. So generally, uh, it's benign, uh, except in um, incidences of immunosuppression, uh, HIV, uh, iatrogenic uh, immunosuppression uh, during, say, transplantation, and also during congenital infection <coughs> and neonate. So CMV uh, also has particular, and this is why we're uh, interested in its uh, development as a vaccine vector, and certain qualities that make it uh, unique in terms of its immunogenicity. It's got evolved a strategy of low-level chronic uh, persistent replication, and what this tends to do is cause a, a continual stimulation of your immune system, such that uh, in even the healthy individual, uh, you can have some individuals actually have half their total T cell population directed solely against CMV antigens, and these are healthy individuals. But even given that, even with this high level of immune response, it can still reinfect a seropositive animal or, or a human, uh, which is quite remarkable. Um, I'm talking about magnitude, also in terms of quality, because of this long-term sort of chronic immune stimulation, um, it also has a unique quality of, of T cell response. And basically, you can divide T cell responses into effector memory and central memory. Um, Central memory are those T cell responses that uh, evolve after an acute pathogen has now infected you and left, for example, flu. You no longer need that uh, active immune uh, response, and so they go off into more of a quiescent state. But they have large proliferative capacities, such that if you get reinfected, they come back, proliferate, and then, um, and then handle the infection. However, what we're seeing is that low-level chronic uh, immune stimulation pushes your T cell memory off into what's called effector memory. And the reason this is important is that it positions these T cells out of the periphery of mucosal epithelial tissue for the life of the individual, and they have immediate effector function. So with this, we sort of came up with the idea that um, a, a vaccine approached uh, around this, this uh, effector memory uh, immune response, given, such as that given by CMB, may be uh, ideally suited to, to pathogens that replicate rapidly and use it as a strategy to, to evade the immune response. Basically, they try and get in, uh, replicate quickly before an immune response can be uh, mounted. And today, what I'm going to tell you um, is our studies uh, against HIV, actually SIV, simian immunodeficiency deficiency virus in the rhesus uh, macaque model and then also studies using this against uh, Ebola virus, the hemorrhagic disease. So the aim of the uh, first uh, study, which I'll uh, tell you about, is to investigate the potential of CMV to induce um, protection against uh, systemic infection 
against SIV in the rhesus and AIDS model. Uh, just a couple of slides, given the, the shortness of the talk. These are our uh, rhesus CMV SIV vectors. They express uh, various regions of SIV. Here's GAG, Rev, TACNF fusion protein, ARM, and um, protease, RT, and other regions of the polymerase here. These are from SIV. They're inserted within the intact rhesus CMV genome. Again, we have to use rhesus CMV because uh, CMV is so species specific. This shows you that they induce long lasting T cell responses. So, this is looking at CD8 and CD4 T cell responses. And this is now uh, in animal tissues four years after the last time they were inoculated with these vaccines. So, we're seeing against GAG, we're seeing about 5% of these animals' total T cell responses in various tissues spleen, liver, uh, lung. Um, bone marrow are targeted and being maintained against this SIV target antigen. Uh, things that I won't show you, uh, the data, uh, reinfection uh, is highly efficient. You can use as little as 100 PFU. Um, they can be good administered orally, which is very useful if you're trying to target <coughs> disease where it's too expensive to use a needle, for example, in the third world in Africa. And also, it's not just specific to SIV. You can also use uh, these vectors to induce a substantial T cell response against TB and monkeypox, uh, amongst other, other pathogens. Okay, in terms of efficacy, I showed you that they induce high levels of T cell responses. We then looked at efficacy. This shows you the basic schematic of the, the experimental outline. Two groups were getting rhesus CMV, uh, expressing the SIV antigens, or uh, a control group was now getting the, the prototypic vaccine that gives you that central memory response, i.e. the antigen comes in, you vaccinate, now the antigen is, is, um, is lost over time, and it, it pushes it off to more of a central memory uh, phenotype in terms of your immune response. And what we saw, people, this was, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Merck trial, where they tried this in humans, and it, it showed to have no effect on uh, HIV acquisition in humans. This was the standard approach. This was the sort of uh, classic way to induce um, vaccine responses against, uh, against HIV, SIV, in, in animals up, up to the, the point of this study. And what we found was in the animals that received the rhesus CMV-based vectors, we now got a profound um, effect on the systemic acquisition of SIV, such that 50% of animals now had, although they were initially infected, they now were essentially maintaining uh, SIV infection below levels of detection, and this has now gone out for uh, greater than two years. This was an extremely uh, high level of control, even if you depleted animals uh, by CD8 depletion, you still couldn't reactivate and uh, detect SIV. And this level of control corresponded with the uh, level of effective memory that you're actually inducing in these animals. Okay, uh, that's basically what I, I told you. And now for the last part, we're just going to move on to uh, the use of CMV for, uh, to target Ebola. This is now taking uh, advantage of another characteristic of, of CMV, which is it's evolved to spread through populations uh, even the presence of, of uh, CMV-specific immunity. And you can see how this would be advantageous if you're trying to target a, a relatively inaccessible animal population. Um, and so we uh, initially have used this to target uh, Ebola virus uh, with the idea that we could use this as a means to target um, great apes, where Ebola virus is a, a major problem. Uh, Ebola virus, it's a negative, set, negative sense uh, RNA virus. Uh, there's five different species of this, this virus, and it's highly lethal. Uh, there's no effective um, cure once you've been infected, and it's also got a, a potential for rapid spread, which is why uh, there's such a high level of interest in this pathogen. This shows you the basic uh, schematic of how it's thought that it uh, comes out into the human population. There's only been eight, about 18 outbreaks since it was first detected in 1976. You've got your bats flying around, which are the uh, reservoir. It doesn't actually cause disease in bats. 
Periodically, you'll actually get now infection coming down through the great ape population. The great apes are susceptible to death from Ebola, they die. Uh, protein sources are extremely scarce in Africa. The ape is taken back, butchered in the village, and now you have your transmission. So about seven of the 18 outbreaks have actually been through uh, handling of great ape carcasses. So you could see how if you can actually interfere with transmission, you could actually now interfere with transmission through to the human uh, population and impact disease in humans. These are results from our uh, first study. A prototype, this is now done in mouse CMV, again, or in the mouse model, we have to use uh, the species-specific uh, CMV, so we're using neurone CMV. And all we're doing is we're fusing a single T-cell epitope from Ebola Zaire uh, to a non-essential protein of the MCMV virus. Uh, this shows you that the responses are extremely long-lived. Uh, animals were vaccinated <coughs> once, and then we looked at the level of T-cell responses over time uh, post-vaccination, and you can see 33 weeks out, this actually has gone out for longer than a year. Following single inoculation, we have about 3% of total T-cells directed against the Ebola target antigen. Um, then in terms of efficacy, we then uh, went on, we did a high-dose challenge, uh, which is 1,000 LD50s, essentially one PFU uh, of the virus is lethal in, in mice. This shows you controls are in uh, clear boxes right here. 10 out of 10 animals also came to disease, uh, essentially like clockwork around seven days post challenge. However, all of our controls, this is now 20 animals, two in independent uh, clones are completely protected against a lethal challenge. Uh, what's more, we wanted to then get a um, idea of quantitatively idea of, of what was going on in terms of the, the efficacy of, of protection, which is shown here, viremia, uh, Ebola viremia day four, which is the peak in viremia post uh, challenge. And what was mar remarkable here is that five out of eight animals are showing complete block in viremia uh, against uh, ZBOB. This is your controls. And then this is sort of a benchmark standard experimental vaccine that, that has been developed. We've subsequently shown that this is now, um, we get this level of protection even four months post single inoculation. And this is sort of summarized here. So why, why have I come to Plymouth? And this is sort of what I'm um, now moving on as center or establishing a sort of center around CMV as a uh, vaccine platform, which I'm extremely collaborative and enjoy um, interacting with people, and so it's sort of um, taken advantage of this. And so we have, uh, with a colleague in, in uh, Berlin, uh, set up projects to look at uh, and identify CMVs in other species, which you can see why this would be advantageous if then we want to uh, use those as back, uh, backbone vectors to target other inaccessible animal populations, for example, uh, badgers with uh, Ebola, Oh, sorry, badgers with uh, bovine TB, and also uh, rabies, canine and CMV, uh, and dogs are a major transmitter of rabies to children in, in uh, India. And also another area that I want to focus on is the use of this for uh, cancer vaccines, which I think is uh, going to be an area um, which will be quite attractive, especially given that CMV induces immune responses that are targeted heavily to the epithelia. Okay, these are the people who are involved in this, uh, these two projects. Uh, there's a large uh, multi-lab uh, group uh, at Oregon Health Sciences which are focused around uh, the SIV studies. Um, and then um, the work has been performed in collaboration with uh, Heinz Feldman in terms of the Ebola studies, who's uh, the chief of RML in Montana. And let us not forget what day it is. <laughs>